What is up everyone? It's a Saturday in Scotland in the middle of February. It's cold, it's damp, we're in the middle of a pandemic and also a pretty severe lockdown. What else is there to do? Well, let's build a snare drum. Building your own snare drum is a lot of fun and also surprisingly easy. It's a good way to get a custom built drum that can look and sound the way you want it to. This won't be the first snare drum that I've built. I've already built one before, back in 2017. This is a 14 by six and a half Babinga Birch shell. Sounds fantastic, I really like this drum. It's got tube lugs, as you can see, DW mag throw off, three position butt plate, uh, pure sound snare wires in the bottom, and it's got these Dixon claw hooks and a single flanged hook, which is really cool. So what are the key ingredients that you need to make your own drum? Well, first of all, you need some sort of shell. You can build these yourself, but it's quite difficult. So I would advise going to someone who knows what they're doing. This is a 14 by eight oak shell, which I got from Tea Drums in the UK. Really, really nice looking shell. And I'm super excited to see how it turns out. You will need some hoops. These are 2.3 millimeter triple flange hoops, which you find in most drums. You'll need to get some lugs. These are Gretsch style lugs. And I've got these little rubber spacers that come with them as well. That just makes sure that the lug isn't going to scratch the shell. Some screws to screw the lugs into the shell. Some tension rods. You will need some snare wires. I've got a DW mag throw off here. These are great. Also, goes without saying, you'll need to get some drum heads as well. So what we need to do before we go and drill any holes is find out where we're going to drill them. So what you're going to do first is find out where the midpoint of the drum is. So this is where your snare wires are going to set your snare strainer. T-drums have really helpfully labelled this for me. Um, if you're building your own shell, you need to keep an eye on where you're putting in your snare beds. So what we're going to do is we're going to go around the shell and we're going to kind of roughly guess where each set of lugs is going to go. So I'm going to go ahead and masking tape them up now. So now that we've got the tape on the shell, we're going to try and draw some vertical lines straight up and down so that we can work out where the lugs are going to go. I'm going to do this using a drum head, which I've drawn some lines on, I've marked out little notches on the end so I'll know exactly where each line is going to go. And I'm going to line up the centre of this drum head with the centre line of the shell, which is down here. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to grab a right angle tool and we're going to draw some lines up and down the shell. I'm going to now do the same on the other side of the shell. So now we are on to marking out where the holes are actually going to go. So using the lines that we've drawn here, and these little rubber grommets that come with the lugs are pretty handy for this sort of thing. I'm going to measure out exactly three centimetres between the top of the shell. Just going to mark that here. And then by placing this grommet on here, can easily mark out where the holes are going to go. So I'm just going to go ahead and do that for the whole drum now. It's also worth trying to do the same thing for the throw-off as well. They've also got the little rubber grommets so you know exactly where to put them to. It's important to remember which side of the drum the throw-off is going to go on. <laughs> Make sure you check that before you do anything. Nice! Let's go and drill some holes. So first of all, I'm going to draw with a smaller drill just to make some pilot holes and then I'm going to go in with the 60mm one which will do all the lugs and the throw off. So that's all the smaller holes done. Let's go on and drill the bigger ones now. Cool. So now I've finished drilling it, I'm just going to file down the inside. As you can maybe see, there's a wee bit of rough edges of wood and stuff like that and it'll be good to just flatten off some of these holes before I take off the tape. So now I'm going to pull off all the tape and stick it all together and hope and pray that it all goes together fine and that we don't need to redraw any holes. So just about to drill the vent holes with this particularly aggressive looking drill bit. The final step here, put the little vent screws, then we'll slap some drum heads on it and see how it sounds. So a month has passed since the last scene. It's the middle of March now. I'm pretty busy with other projects, other things, but finally back on with this. In the meantime though, I did get some new tension rods for the drum. The ones I had before were a wee bit too long. They weren't going in far enough because as you can maybe see, I did make the lugs a wee bit too close to the rim. 
but not a problem, it still works, just something to be careful with if you're doing this yourself. And I also got a lovely Gibraltar 48 strand snare wire for the bottom as well, which as you'll hear makes it sound really big and beefy, which is super cool. So I'm going to pop out the kit, I'm going to play a little bit, I'm going to mess around with some different tunings, different dampenings. Mic wise, I'm using a pretty minimal setup here. I've got two mics, a wee bit further away from the drum to capture more of an overall picture. I always think it's a little bit unfair in these kind of demo videos when people have the, the snare close mic because when you're listening to the drum, you don't listen to it with your ear right up next to the head. So this is an AEA R84 ribbon microphone paired with a Neumann KM184. These are about a foot and a half or so away from the drum. And on the overhead up here, I've got another AEA R84, which is just capturing a general overhead picture and inside the kick is a Shure Beta 91. So there you go, a whole bunch of different sounds available there. I'll post a video with some longer demonstrations of each tuning if anyone's interested and wants to listen in a little bit more detail. And let me know what your favourite sound was in the comments below, I'm always keen to hear what people think. But hopefully that proves to you guys that you can make a really really good quality snare drum with your own hands. So for me this really filled a gap in my collection. I had a lot of snare drums that are quite shallow so I wanted something that was a little bit deeper, had a bit more punch and a bit more depth to it and I really feel like I've got that now. Hope you see how easy it is to do this yourself. Any questions about this let me know in the comments below. Like, subscribe, comment, follow me on socials, all the usual things apparently I'm supposed to say. And I'll see you guys next time. Cheers!